Cop realized he fractured innocent guy's skull. Welcome back to Audit Zone. Around 5.40 a.m. on March 4th, 2022, deputies of the Paulding County Sheriff's Office, Georgia, got calls that a man with a backpack was trying to break into vehicles. Deputy Michael McMaster was assigned to respond to the incident. Around the same time, a young man named Tyler Canaris was on his way to work and had his backpack as he walked by the roadside. When Deputy McMaster saw Canaris, he quickly concluded that he was the suspect. So he got down from his patrol vehicle and, without any explanation, began ordering Canaris to remove his backpack and put his hands behind his back. Canaris was confused since he had not committed any crime. Because Canaris tried to defend his innocence verbally, Deputy McMaster quickly lost his temper and violently slammed oh. the young man to the ground, severely wounding him. Suplex? There was a suplex necessary? He wasn't even really... He wasn't even really resisting. He was like hippie resisting and shit. Master quickly hey, lost his time. On, bro. What are you because doing? Canaris tried to defend his innocence verbally, Deputy McMaster quickly lost his temper and violently slammed the young man to the ground, severely wounding him. Dang. Oh yeah, that's that groan. What's he saying? Oh, he's going to work. Deputy McMaster committed multiple constitutional violations in less than one minute of encountering Canaris. <laughs> First, he did not immediately state the reason for the stop, even though the young man immediately asked for an explanation. The deputy just started handling him aggressively. Canaris has a First Amendment right to freedom of speech and was right to verbally defend his innocence against the false accusation leveled against him by the deputy. As it was later found, Canaris was not the suspect. Deputy McMaster just got angry because Canaris exercised his constitutional right to free speech, just like any other innocent person would do when accused of a crime they know nothing about. The that slamming is. to the ground was uncalled for. As we have shown several times on this channel, most police departments in the US would consider Deputy McMaster's behavior as an excessive use of force. The deputy's violent behavior violated the 14th Amendment. The deputy searched Canaris' bag. He and his colleague, Deputy Odgin, then joked and laughed about Canaris' behavior as the young man groaned in severe pain. When the fire department arrived to provide medical care, they found blood on the ground where Canaris was slammed on. Listen here, Billy Bob, you big fat p you don't rule the world, man. Fuck out of here. I'm trying to hear that shit. I think they're asking up on the ground. I wasn't even trying to. Wasn't trying to. How old are you? How old are you? Get older than me. Act like a fucking man. I'm retarded to get the word. I'm seriously not trying to get the word. It's just too big. I got to think of it. While the other guy, while the guy that supposedly did whatever they looking for, gone. They sitting here crushing dude's skull, and the other guy's gone. When the cops say, put your hands behind your back, you do it. 
And then we explain. I don't know where he went wrong. I was trying to explain to you, but you wanted to keep pulling away. So now you're under arrest for obstruction. I have to tell you. Yeah. No, I told you multiple times. All you had to do was listen. But no, you wanted to be a child, try to pull away. You got mad medications. No, you're under arrest. No. Yeah. Really? I got my other hip on my ear. Please come on. I'm just trying to get my life back down. Just for the first time, it's Chris. It's not Chris. Can you just call my dad, please? How old are you? 29? I'm not calling your dad. What? I'm not calling your dad. You're 29. You're older than me. I oh, come on, please. What a piece of shit. I'm just trying to get to work. I'm just trying to get to work. No, 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 if you've ever wondered how to take vocals out of a song to either make an a cappella or an instrumental version, address that later. Oh, okay. All you do is take your backpack off and turn around and put your hand by the back. You wouldn't have played this game. Did Duke go quiet? D1. Did they Did kill that dude? D1. Oh, okay. The Iron Sheik showed up. My wife likes to the car. I don't think he actually got into the car. Um, I dropped him on his head right there. <laughs> I got boo boos too, so I'm okay. But yeah, put it back in my car. Just make sure he's definitely at the point. So. Hey, come out real quick. Deputy McMaster further violated Canaris' constitutional right by searching the backpack and emptying all of its contents without consent. Nothing incriminating was found in the backpack. In fact, the hand gloves that the deputy seemed to be excited about was related to Canaris' job, since he works as a landscaper. In his police report, Deputy McMaster made several ridiculous statements that will make any reasonable person question his worthiness as a law enforcement agent. McMaster claimed he treated Canaris violently due to the lack of sunlight. He also stated that he had no colleague to assist him, and his experience taught him that people like Canaris usually have targeted items. The deputy also narrated the encounter as if Canaris disobeyed him for several minutes, even though the time between his first contact and the violent conduct was less than a minute. The deputy also claimed he sustained injuries following the incident. Deputy Odgan accompanied Canaris to the hospital. Following that, Deputy McMaster finally took his time to confirm the identity of the main suspect. He watched the surveillance footage and found that the main suspect wore different shoes and was likely not Canaris. Despite that, the deputy tried to justify his conduct by claiming Canaris quickly changed his shoes before he saw him. Canaris <laughs> was eventually charged with obstruction of an officer. It seemed when Deputy Odgin followed Canaris to the hospital, he humiliated the innocent man even on the sick bed. Pat Gadsden, who claimed Canaris is his grandson, wrote a review on the Google page of the Pauling County Sheriff's Office. He wrote, They put my grandson in the hospital. They get no stars from me, put my grandson in the hospital thinking he was the wrongdoer. Had him handcuffed to the bed in the ER and then told him they found the real criminal. My grandson had surgery on his shattered collarbone, a fractured skull, and splinted broken thumb. The police report read he was released on site. I think that this is a crime as he was taken to the hospital by the police and handcuffed. Well, thinking he was the wrongdoer, had him handcuffed to the bed in the ER and then told him they found the real criminal. My grandson had surgery on a shattered collarbone, a fractured skull, and a splinted broken thumb. The police report read he was released on site. I think that is a crime as he was taken to hospital by the police and handcuffed. In February 2023, Canaris' legal team announced they would file a civil rights lawsuit against Pauling County. They should. One of Canaris' attorneys, Sean Williams, said the young man retained his firm just one week after the incident in March 2022. However, movement on the case had been minimal due to the sheriff's office blocking multiple requests for details they made under the Freedom of Information Act. Another Canaris attorney, Taurus Butterfield, said the obstruction charge the department later took to court should be dismissed. He explained that under Georgia law, citizens have the right to resist an unlawful arrest, which is what happened in this case. The legal team was also concerned that it took the sheriff's office eight months before they finally decided to file the alleged obstruction charge. 
The attorneys also don't understand why the department and county solicitor did not bring charges against McMaster after their investigation. Attorney Williams promised to send a letter because he's probably somebody's grandson along the way to the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate if the Paulding Sheriff's Office and Solicitor's Office were involved in covering up the deputy's misconduct. Due to his injuries, Canera spent nine days in the hospital. He has now revealed that he can no longer pull or lift things like he used to. When a concerned citizen got the video of the incident and shared it on YouTube on February 16th, 2023, it quickly went viral and drew public outcry. After seeing people's reactions, Sheriff Gary Gulledge released a statement the following day. The sheriff seemed to be in support of his deputy by stating that Mr. No, Canaris repeatedly him. refused to comply with the deputy's commands to remove the his backpack died. and place his hands behind his back. And that was why Deputy McMaster used force to bring Mr. Canaris to the ground and placed him under arrest. If the sheriff supports a quick escalation of a non-violent encounter that occurred in less than one minute, I think that says a lot about this department's leadership and conduct. Following their internal investigation, Deputy McMaster was taken off patrol and placed on desk duty. However, in March 2023, it was reported that the sheriff's office had terminated like the desk. appointment of Deputy McMaster for policy violations. The department did not elaborate on the violations, but it said that it was not directly related to the body slamming incident. No, he was probably the sheriff's stealing. office also added that the Georgia Bureau of Investigation is still investigating the incident. As of recording this video, there was no new information concerning the lawsuit and the GBI investigation. I will update you if I find any new details. Well, that's all concerning this video. That kid was Thanks already messed up and he was different after that day, I'm sure. It's bananas. These people are just dirty. Dirty, 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 dirty.